Football Forecast First, brought to you by Brick Street Insurance. Another cold punch tonight that could be very tricky for the drive tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Patrick Simon. And I'm Lily Bradley. We begin tonight with Spencer because we have another snowstorm moving into our region tonight. It's already underway right now across portions of the bluegrass. Let's show you what the advisories have in store for us tonight. Now we've seen a couple of photos out to the west of us. I've been checking social media and I have seen mainly snow on the grassy surfaces in places like Maysville, in places like Moorhead, and the snow is going to work its way to the east. Eventually the snow will stick. You have these advisories out for Southern Ohio, just about all of Kentucky, and straight across Interstate 64 into the mountains. Here's a band of snow again just south of Huntington that extends right back along I-64 and more snow showers to the south. The snow will pick up again in the mountains and continue for many more hours around the Oak Hill area and Fayetteville. The system's going to take several hours. It really still has a lot of time to enhance here across Kentucky, western Kentucky with the rain. That'll be spilling across the area, bringing us about one to three inches of snow across the I-64 corridor, a little bit less to the north. The air temperature is key, as is the road temperature, 32 in Charleston, 33 in Inez, a little warmer in Huntington at 37 degrees. The road temperature, again, from Huntington to the west is freezing or colder. Right now, though, most most of those road surfaces are just wet. Secondary roads would start to stick first with the snow tonight, as well as bridges and overpasses. So it's not the deepest snow we've had. It's just the timing. So what's happening is we have wet and slushy roads early. That's generally one to two inches with a max of about three in the lowlands, a little bit more in the high terrain. And we have school delays that are possible. We have a few out there even as we speak. It's time now for the rest of 13 News at 11. Working for you. This is 13 News at 11. And now on 13 News at 11, a West Virginia coal miner was killed on the job today in Greenbrier County. The accident happened at the South Fork Coal Company Blue Knob Surface Mine. Preliminary information indicates Adam DeBoard of Craigsville, West Virginia, died from head injuries sustained during a fall. DeBoard was a loader operator at the mine. Governor Justice and First Lady Kathy Justice released a statement tonight saying, quote, West Virginia lost one of our dedicated coal miners today, and Kathy and I are deeply saddened at the news. We encourage everyone to join us in praying for the family, friends, and co-workers of Adam DeBoard. The statement continues saying, Brave and courageous miners like Mr. DeBoard are heroes to us all. With just a couple of days to go, the West Virginia House passes a budget bill which now moves on to the Senate. But that bill does not include teacher pay raises yet, so Governor Justice is calling the legislature back for a special session. 13 News Chief Political Reporter Mark Curtis has more from the Capitol. Lawmakers are working fast to pass dozens of bills as the legislative session will end Saturday night. But it's clear all of their work will not get done by that deadline, including the 5% pay raise promised to state employees and education workers. Governor Justice is calling a special session to deal with education reform issues. The discussion may well include controversial items again, such as charter schools and education savings accounts that brought teachers to the Capitol in February for a two-day strike. We'll uh, consider the different options, but uh, certainly uh, charter schools, education savings accounts, tax credits for teachers, payment for their sick days, uh, those type things. And now you're very cautious about what the call is going to be and how broad it is. I know that our members are not interested in things like ESAs and charter schools. That previous education reform bill passed the Senate but failed in the House of Delegates. There is strong bipartisan support for passing the 5% pay raise. And that is one thing that I've always felt will be a significant educational reform is making sure that we're paying our, our school personnel appropriately so we're attracting the best people. The um, teachers and school service personnel were promised a pay raise back before the election and I think that um, they need to um, receive the promise that was made to them. Special sessions cost taxpayers approximately $40,000 per day. So far, no data is set for the special session, but the thinking here is that delegates and senators should go home for a month or so and get input from their constituents before coming back and making a more informed vote. At the state capitol in Charleston, I'm Mark Curtis, 13 News, working for you. A bill that would allow West Virginia residents to attend community and technical colleges for free is now heading to the governor's desk. The state Senate unanimously passed the House's amended bill today. So here's how it works. The students will first secure whatever state and federal grants and scholarships are available. 
and then the state will pay the remaining balance in a program known as Last Dollar In. Students will now have to pass a drug test each semester, maintain a 2.0 grade point average, take at least six credit hours a semester, and perform at least eight hours of community service. Kanawha County Commissioners have filled the vacancy on the Kanawha Charleston Health Department Board. Jeremy Nelson, the Executive Director of Moses Premier Auto Group, will fill that spot. The decision came as the final five candidates were interviewed at tonight's County Commission meeting. Nelson says that he will work to improve communications between the board and commissioners. Well, I think that there's uh, definitely a need for communication between the health department, city officials, county officials, and the business community. Nelson was the only candidate with no medical background. Charleston Mayor Amy Goodwin wrapped up her citywide listening tour for now at least. The mayor held five events across the city since being elected. That tour gave residents of Charleston a chance to ask questions and provide feedback to the new administration. With overwhelming response that we've received at each one of these locations, it says to us, we want to continue to have these open conversations with you. Listen, this is what building a great community is all about, and there's no question these are going to continue. Mayor Goodwin says she believes it's important to be out in the community to make sure that neighbors know they have a voice in their city government. Tonight, Huntington Police Chief Hank Dial presented his budget to City Council. It's the largest budget with the city that the city deals with, that of the Huntington Police Department. In it, he's requesting five additional vehicles be added to the fleet. He's also requesting money for effective recruiting and other community programs like the Violent Crime Initiative, which Dial says is making a tremendous impact. It gives us funding to go out and do those operations. We can go instead of just, you know, we spend a lot of time uh, answering 911 calls, but in addition to that, our officers can go out and be proactive and uh, investigate criminals. The Public Works Department will give their budget presentation next Thursday at 5 p.m. in council chambers at City Hall. They are expected to discuss paving and sidewalk projects. The Public Affairs Committee in Portsmouth met to review the new hotel and motel tax credit application. The application states that one third of the hotel and motel tax credits will go toward the beautification process for local parks and other upkeep locations in downtown Portsmouth. The committee discussed the positive effect it will have on the community. Our budget is typically about 30000 a year. We're very dependent on the hotel motel tax to make that possible. And uh, it'll incorporate everything from the flowers to the uh, arrangements that are in all of the pots, the hanging baskets, and then the upkeep for the public parks. The committee will continue to review the application and to make a decision on whether or not to take on the project. We'll of course keep you updated on the state of the application as more information becomes available. An update now to a story that we brought you earlier this week. A second person has now died after being severely burned in a Clay County house fire. That fire happened Tuesday on Little Sycamore Road in Glen. Connie Miller told us that she had to jump from the second story of that home just to make it out alive. She says her father, John Rogers, who slept on the third floor, never made it out of the home. A second victim was airlifted from the scene. Officials say that they had to use water pumped from the creek due to the remote location of the fire. No word yet on what caused that fire. One man is dead after a shooting that happened in Cabell County earlier this morning. Around 4 a.m., sheriff deputies were dispatched to a home on Wentz Hollow Road. According to Sheriff Chuck Circle, a woman called 911 to report an intruder was in her home and that she had shot him. That man, according to the sheriff, turned out to be her husband, 52-year-old David Elder. The sheriff tells us they've been called out to that home multiple times for domestic disturbance calls. U.S. Marshals shot and killed a West Virginia man wanted for the attempted murder of a Bluefield, Virginia police officer back on February 17th. Marshals were able to track 25-year-old Dawn Quayle Gray to an area just blocks from WVU's campus yesterday. Gray had been the focus of a manhunt since shooting a 29-year-old deputy during a traffic stop. Just after noon, officers say they attempted to take Gray into custody. They say Gray had a handgun and fired at least one shot. We are told a marshal shot back. Gray was found dead at the scene. The American Red Cross in Cabell and Wayne counties are on the search for new recruits. 
At their location in Huntington, staff at the Biomed building held an open house today with information on volunteer opportunities. Along with hosting blood drives, the American Red Cross also provides community services for disaster victims, biomedical services, and other community engagement projects. The Red Cross wants to give their volunteers the option to help in the area they feel is best for them. We actually try and match up how much time you're willing to give us to what you want, want to do. So we try and, and meet your needs and find something you will enjoy. You can go to the Red Cross website at redcross.org for more volunteer opportunities. All right, let's talk a little bit about this snow that's on the way, and we already have some in some neighborhoods. I think most of the roads are going to be wet and slushy in the morning, and there's really going to be a small window of opportunity around 6, 7, 8, 9, when the snow's really coming down hard for things to really slow down before things melt. We actually have some delays in the mountain counties of two to three hours for schools, but there are the advisories and the donut holes, if you will, are because A, it's a little too warm here to the south, and B, there's not as much moisture to the north. We do have a little stripe right across ice. 64 starting to show up right now. When we put this into motion, we can tell that there's a little bit of some rain mixing in with the snow too. The honest to goodness snow that's sticking nicely in the grass runs from, let's go just west of Greenup, back here across to about Moorhead and we've seen a little bit of that too up in the Maysville area. We're going to pick up some of that again. A little light snow being reported around the Prestonsburg area and then that snow again from Indiana still pressing its way on in. So waking up and seeing the snow on the grass and roughly we're going to go with about an inch for some of us. Again, maybe two in some of the lowlands. We're going to see these marks just kind of hover around 32 in Charleston. We'll likely see that mark drop in the Huntington area back down to about 33 or so. Your current road temperatures right there where the precip is coming down 32 degrees Madison Hamlin and Huntington and so we're going to warm up eventually this will all melt in the afternoon but we still have that wet snow until a window of about somewhere between 10 and noon and the advisory shut down for many of us at one we'll have more on the forecast and an interesting weekend too in just a few minutes. Spencer, thanks. The University of Charleston hosted a joyful, colorful, and fun-filled celebration of Carnival around the world today. The event was put on by the university's Global Student Organization. This year's event is designed to highlight both the similarities and differences in world Carnival culture. Students enjoyed samples of traditional Carnival street foods, as well as a fashion show presenting attire from UC students' home countries. Diversity is something that is already all around us, so why, why not embrace it as we can, so just have fun with it, learn about it, uh, get to know in our countries, uh, just enjoy the time here. The University of Charleston is home to students from more than 41 different countries. Well, local students received some special recognition at the state capitol today. Students from Hayes Middle School, Flynn Elementary, Andrew Heights Elementary, and Holtz Elementary were honored by the West Virginia House of Representatives today for their robotics programs. The students qualified for this year's VEX Robotics World Championship competition happening in April. Even if it might be adding an app to your phone or iPad that is coding, you might even like that too, but you should at least try it out. Please try it out, right? Yeah. Not only do six Kanawha County Elementary robotics teams rank in the top 10% in the world, which is impressive by itself, mm. right? But those teams come from four different schools from areas that are spread throughout the county. So congrats to those students. That's really awesome. Yeah, indeed. And while we're recognizing people, the Huntington Regional Highway Safety Program held their annual awards banquet today to award 20 officers, seven law enforcement departments, and six community members for highway safety activities. Organizers say sometimes, you know, there are negative stories about law enforcement. This is really a great way to recognize those helping curb impaired driving, stop distracted driving, and speed enforcement. It's, it's great recognition for them. Uh, they don't, may not show it, uh, but they do enjoy it. Uh, and they, they're very humble uh, that they are receiving awards for their hard work. Law enforcement agencies from Huntington, Barbersville, Milton, Nitro, and Williamsburg were in attendance. Well, still to come on 13 News at 11, an amazing honor for the founder of our parent company, Nexstar. The celebration still ahead.